And uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for uh, thinking outside the box and putting our veterans first. And I really appreciate that so very much and being so open-minded when it comes to this. Uh, can you speak to how you envision VA assessing and monitoring the quality of care received in the community and whether you believe community providers should be required to meet or access, uh, excel the same quality standards VA uh, providers are required to meet? And if so, how would you accomplish that? Is that something the VA can do on its own or will it require legislation? Yeah. Um Congressman, uh, we, have, uh, we have a very extensive set of metrics in which to do that, but I have to my left Dr. Clancy, one of the country's experts on this, and it's her area of responsibility, so I'm going to ask her to talk to that. So it's a very, very important question. The issue of what you can learn about the quality of care in the community is a picture that's changing and growing rapidly because more and more people want to know. Um, if I'm going to seek uh, care from Dr. Hill or Dr. Rowe, how do I know that that is the right uh, provider for me? Um, it's a bit spotty right now, but we are working with private sector partners, um, and they too are facing increased demands from the private and public sectors to be far more transparent about their care. Right now, the greatest uh, transparency that we see is in cardiology because their professional organization has been building this out for a while. Uh, but we will see more and more of that over time. And that becomes a big resource for us to be able to hold ourselves accountable that we are providing care that is at least comparable and hopefully better than that provided in the private sector. But it's also going to be, as Dr. Shulkin just said, a key part of our decision uh, matrix in terms of when are veterans eligible for choice or care in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Please continue to, to communicate with us on that issue. Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, Doctor, of course, uh, please respond to concerns that the uh, $2.1 billion Congress provided in August to supplement the CHOICE Act uh, the fund will run out before the end of the six-month period that money was intended to cover. How much money is in the CHOICE Act now? Uh, and uh, do you have any concerns that the VA will over-obligate that fund before the end of the year? So we just want to report yeah. Yeah. on what's um, there. there. There were some uh, erroneous reports earlier that we were quickly running out of money on, on that fund. That is not the case. Um, we do plan on the $2.1 billion lasting till the end of the year. As you know, you authorized this again in August, so we believe we'll get through the end of the calendar year. I think as the chairman said, and I reiterated, we believe there is some urgency to get this done before the December recess so we don't fall into crisis. Uh, we are tracking the financial projections on the $2.1 billion, and it's tracking according to plan. We follow it every week. Having said that, this is a very challenging program to do financial projections on. I know it sounds like it should be easy, but when you have to record your payments before, when you have to obligate your funds before you provide the service, it's like looking into a crystal ball and trying to guess what services a veteran will use, and no other private sector company would do that. Uh, so that it is, it is very tough for us to do this, but we are doing the best we can and we think that we're on plan. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, skilled uh, nursing care centers were not included in the CHOICE program as an eligible provider, as you know. Utilizing existing resources like skilled nursing centers could help alleviate access issues for quality care uh, uh, again, in our own communities. Uh, does the VA support provider agreements for skilled nursing centers? And uh, can you explain potential benefits or initial concerns? Yes, we do support that. Um, right now, um, as you know, Medicare reports on the quality of community nursing centers. And many of the most popular or highest quality nursing centers won't deal with the VA because of the complexity of our federal contracting rules and the requirements that we put in place. Provider agreements and being able to do this directly with the skilled nursing facilities with less 
burdensome contracting rules would help veterans. It would allow us to have access to the best centers that are out there in the, in the community. So we would very much support that. Oh, thank you for that input. I appreciate that. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Thank you, gentlemen, for yielding. Mr. Connolly, you